What's up guys, Hanish here, and today we have some Destiny 2 Warmind news to talk about, and this comes in the form of this week at Bungie for the 17th of May. So first up, we have information about the next Iron Banner coming to Destiny 2, some of the reward changes that we'll be seeing there. On top of this, we have some changes that will be coming to some of the endgame elements in an update on the 29th of May, and this will include changes to Escalation Protocol and Heroic Strikes. We've got some insights and information about ranked play, and a bunch of other stuff to talk about, so let's Let's jump straight into it. First up, I should mention that yesterday Bungie updated the development roadmap. You can see it on screen right here. There is going to be an update on May the 29th, bringing faction rallies, as well as improvements to that. We're going to see Crucible Labs, which is a new private test kind of environment, as well as some exotic armor sandbox changes. July, we'll see a summer event called Solstice of Heroes. We're going to be getting bounties, the prestige raid layers, PC clan text chat, year one triumphs, and more exotic armor sandbox changes. And then of course, there is more stuff coming down the road in September that we've spoken about in the past. So that stuff is really positive. Of course, the 29th is not very far away, just another reset in between those dates, but we will be getting the Iron Banner on Tuesday, May the 22nd. So of course, this is the first Iron Banner. The game mode is going to be Control. Bungie don't actually specify it in this update, but I believe it's going to be 6v6. They did say that they're going to do that with every Iron Banner going forward, but they do say that the ways in which players earn rewards have also been updated for Season 3. Saladin will feature a similar reputation system to the Vanguard, where players can climb ranks by turning in Iron Banner tokens, each reputation rank will lend progress to unlocking desired rewards. So now you will have to actually get to, you know, particular ranks to unlock certain rewards. And it looks like this is going to work across the entirety of Season 3, not just in each individual Iron Banner. We do see this screenshot right here with some of the new rewards. We've got various ornaments, the new weapons. We can see a ship and the emblem right there. On top of this, Bungie give us a better screenshot of what some of these weapons look like. They are using models that we've had for weapons in the past, but obviously they've gone with these much more kind of ornate skins, I guess is what you call them. So I'm curious to hear what you guys think about that. I did also make a video with all of the perks for these weapons, so we'll link that down below. On top of this though, Bungie give us a preview of the new ornaments for each of the classes. So very much a kind of knight regal type theme going on. Definitely interesting, different looking stuff. I'd be curious to hear what you guys think about that. But anyway, bear that in mind, Tuesday, May the 22nd, up until Tuesday, May 29th, Iron Banner will go live. Up next though, Daniel from Bungie gives us some words about progression inside of the Warmind expansion, some things that they're actually going to be changing in an update on May the 29th, and some stuff that they want to work on. So Daniel says, Warmind is out and we're super excited that this is in your hands now, as we're able to get a bunch of excellent input on what we did well and what we still need to work on. One of those areas I'd like to talk about a bit is progression. I spoke a little bit about this before Warmind launch, but I think one thing I could have been more clear about was that Warmind progression system is an improvement over Curse of Osiris, but still not where we ultimately want to end up. It's a step down the road to make the game more in line with where we want it, but we need to make these iterations one step at a time so that we can incorporate feedback and ensure that we're heading in the right direction. And so next he talks about Heroic Strikes and he says in the May 29th update, you'll see a small change to make these feel better. So firstly, for Escalation Protocol, the key fragments will become a 100% drop chance from each Heroic Strike. The goal is to make getting these fragments more accessible while also preserving the need Need to play non-open world content to get the fragments. So of course right now if you play a strike you have a chance to get a couple of these keys dropped. If you do a prestige nightfall I believe you get seven guaranteed or at least on your first completion but they are going to make those heroic strikes a little bit more rewarding and I think that's definitely positive. On top of this though they are going to improve heroic strikes so he says that heroic strikes will be able to drop better rewards. Every three to five heroic strikes will drop a legendary that can carry you up to 360 power before mods and this should better align with the rewards of heroic strikes with the difficulty of the activity and help solo players have a more reliable source of upgrades. We won't have any time to make changes to what's coming on the 29th but please let us know how you feel about these rates. So I think at least you know a few changes there is definitely positive. Right now the heroic strikes are just not quite rewarding enough in terms of power level. So if you are working you know through 350, 360 then heroic strikes should actually become much more useful. I think the change to key fragments as well is a positive thing but it does say that 
we're tracking some additional issues that don't have immediate solutions. And this includes how to smooth out the transition into endgame grind once the campaign is over. Currently there is a brick wall that players seem to be running into at 345 where progression goes from fast to super frictioned. And this is one of those areas we definitely don't believe is perfect. So we're looking at how to smooth that transition out. On top of this, once milestones are complete, there aren't rewards to chase. Exotic masterworks and seasonal ranks help this problem a little bit, but these definitely aren't enough. As highlighted in the roadmap, weapon randomization and records should also give players more to do once their milestones are complete. And that doesn't mean we believe this is a fully solved problem. We're talking about other ways to help mitigate this. Next though, endgame progression needs more tiers. Right now, everything gives similar sized upgrades without discrete tiers in the progression system for players to climb. This is something I definitely wouldn't expect a solution for prior to September, but it's on our radar. And the quality of rewards doesn't always match the difficulty of the activity. We're seeing a lot of this feedback around the raid layer rewards in particular, so talking about how we can better align with the quality of reward and difficulty of activity is something we're going to be thinking about going forward. So the changes that we've got there coming on May 29th sound good. I'm glad that they're talking about these other progression issues as well, you know, what you do once you've cleared your milestones. The transition to endgame grind and the different kind of ladders or tiers to types of content and what rewards you get. I made a video yesterday where I spoke about this DLC and that was one of my kind of complaints is that we do need different ways to get into different types of activity. Escalation Protocol right now is kind of an example of that. A different version difficulty would have been nice for solo players and teams of three in patrol and things like that. Either way, it's good that they're still looking at it. Let me know what you guys think. Next though, Derek Carroll gives some insights about Crucible rankings. So he says that some players have raised questions that we can address here. Firstly, why would I match against a player with a higher glory rank than me? And he says for a variety of reasons, we don't match directly on your glory number instead using our per playlist skill value it's quite likely that your opponent is a good match against you but they've been grinding glory more consistently so we've moved up in the ranks faster take this as a sign that you'll likely reach that rank with continued play Next question is why would I match against preformed fire teams when I'm searching as a solo player? And he said that after a bit of server side tuning and investigation, we re-enabled Crucible fire team matchmaking yesterday. This does not directly reduce the chances of matching pre-made fire teams, but it does tweak the skill value of those fire teams to make it more likely that they'll find an evenly matched opponent. The next question is why don't you make a solo queue only playlist? And he says that we don't want to do that because it would split up the population in an unhealthy way, making it less likely for everyone to find good matches. Furthermore, that would probably mean splitting up the glory rank into solo glory and team glory numbers, and we'd much rather there be one single number to represent your prowess in the crucible. The final question is, why would you place me in a game in progress that you know I'm going to lose and end my streak? And it says you're trying to kick me, hypothetical guardian, but there's no join in progress in competitive, so this can't happen for glory. However, we are working on a fix for Valor and in the other playlists so that you won't lose your Valor streak that way. So that's definitely positive as well. Plenty of quality of life changes there. I'm glad that Bungie are giving feedback and reacting to what's happening right now. You know, what we're saying about this expansion. That hasn't really happened in the past. Of course, they've spoken much more over the past couple of months leading up to the new content. But now that it's out in the wild and they're taking this feedback, I think that's really positive. The final thing that they talk about will actually be the Destiny Companion app. So they say that they're working on a few different updates for early summer, and this will include stats and medals. They're actively looking into ways that they can add medals and other stats incrementally. And this is basically so that you can track more different types of data on the app. They say that they want to work on LFG. They also want to make changes to vendor accessibility, improve gear user experience and sorting, as well as a couple of other things. So if that is of particular interest to you, I will link the article in the description below. There are also some known issues, including the problem with heroic strikes and boons of the vanguard. There's also another issue with clan XP and milestones that they're looking into. So once again, you can check out the articles if you're having any issues with those things. But guys, that's going to pretty much sum up the bulk of this week at Bungie. Lots of conversation if you're currently playing right now and you're curious about changes, you've got any feedback to make. I'd certainly be curious to hear your thoughts down below, any frustrations or issues that you found with the expansion or with any of the systems, or indeed any things that you've really enjoyed 
enjoyed about the DLC, of course. But if you have enjoyed this video, guys, a like is really appreciated below. It really helps me out on the channel. If you're new around here, be sure to hit subscribe to see more Destiny 2 content. Check out my sponsor, Control Freak, if you want to save 10% on any of the products in their store, including their thumbsticks, braided cables, and more. You can use code Houndish and you'll save yourself a few bucks. The link for that will be below. For now, though, I appreciate you watching as always. I'll catch you guys very soon. Thank you